Um, so there are two answers to that. <laughs> one is the long one and the short one. The short one is that blockchain will completely change uh, the way we work and do things, and nobody will know about it. So just like today, when if I ask you, when you send an email, what happens, I can actually bet that nobody, not only you, but nobody here knows what's actually, what, what happens. Uh, but it works, and that's the most important thing. So in that, in the same aspect, the blockchain will change the way, the way we deal with value, and it will just work, and it will be amazingly fast and simple, intuitive, and everybody will be so happy. But if you ask in 10 years, what actually happens underneath, they will say, I don't know, there's just something there. They, maybe they will know the word blockchain, but they will just say, I don't know, it just works. So that's it. it ba I mean, now in technical terms, basically what the blockchain needs, it's just a database. Okay? This is like in simple terms, it's a database where you write stuff. Okay? Now, the reason why it's so interesting is because first the question is who writes the stuff? And can you trust it? Now, the simple answer is that, yes, there are entities that kind of check that what you write there uh, is kind of in order, that, you, that uh, there are no mistakes in, in simple terms, and you can actually trust them. You can, so an, if another entity writes something and you look at it and you say, hmm, should I trust it? On the, when it's on the blockchain, you actually have this element of trust among parties who don't know each other. So for instance, if you and I didn't met yesterday and talked a little bit, but if you did something on the blockchain and then I looked at it, I would say, okay, I believe it, you know, uh, something there. I don't know what happens, but it works. So this is basically, it's a database where some entity, where people can write things and some entities maintain this database and establish this trust between two people that actually have no common matter between each other. Uh, to understand how it will revolutionize finance, for, uh, first has to know how it works now. And people will be completely shocked to hear that you know, your millions and billions and trillions that are turned over every day in finance, that the methodology and procedures that mandate how these values and assets and money is turned over, they have, they're based on principles from the 60s and the 70s. So now let's go back to 60s and 70s. That means in 60s when you and I wanted to trade something, I would write a piece of paper, right? And I would say that I would sign it, write the description, and so on. They would go take it to the, you know, the, I don't know, the post office, or then they would say, okay, now we have to send it to you, and then you would read it, and then you would say, okay, does this work? You have to check things, and they say, oh, okay, I believe this guy. There's something. Everything is right here. Then you would sign it, and you kind of have to go back. Now it's kind of shockingly is that the the same procedure is in place today. Like literally, you go to any bank. Of course, certain elements have been computerized, but the same procedure is in place today. It's like kind of shocking to know it. So kind of, and this, I mean, it's kind of unintuitive that we have instantaneous communication today. I mean, I have my cell phone here with me. I can communicate instantaneously, but all of a sudden when you start dealing with money and assets and value, it takes 10 days and it costs a lot of money and people have no clue what's going on. But there are very good reasons why it takes so many days and why it costs so much money. And the reason for that is because it's literally the whole so-called settlement system when you exchange assets, it's still based on the same procedures like from the 70s when you send pieces of paper. Uh, so one aspect that, the, that can, can be solved by blockchain is actually the one related to technology. So just kind of like they described, the, 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 the setup is still based on all principles, so the blockchain will kind of just replace it and you have a new and efficient infrastructure. So that's kind of nice, but what will the blockchain will do in an in intangible manner is that it will kind of open the financial system to everyone. It will democratize it, so anyone will have an access, and whatever you want to do, it will be just very clear and simple and efficient. And if you want to have your project, you know, to do your blockchain sci-fi movie, you can just say, I want to have this project. I will, you, will, you will kind of announce it to the, to the global network of individuals. And people who like it, they will say, yeah, why not? You know, maybe there's a person in Singapore, that one in US, in LA, you know, some movie director, and then some person on the South Pole, you know, looking at your project and say, yeah, I like this idea. And they will provide you funds to realize your idea. So it will just be a complete democracy in finance which is, I mean, this is unbelievable, but today, if you're not the guys with million and the right network, let's say like that, you don't have an access to anything. 
So it's just kind of like we open up the financial system to everyone. Just very simple and then things will come out from that that you cannot even imagine, that I cannot even predict now. So, but that will come in like five to ten years. So, first of all, Lick is a company, just to make it clear, of a lot of nice people. But in my view, so this is my personal opinion, is Lick is a vision from Richard. So Richard, actually, kind of what I was describing now, I heard many times. So a lot of the words that I'm saying now are kind of not mine, but are Richard. So I'm like his ambassador. So he always had this idea, let's completely change the financial system. You know? And because he's, so, because he's Swiss and so polite and nice, he would tell me, Anton, we need to go to the banks and twist their arm so they would change. And of course, they would never work. You know, they would have a nice conversation, they would smile, they would say, ah, you're so nice, everybody's so nice. They would say, yeah, the door is over there, and kind of the, it would have the set status quo would continue. But always there was this dream, this vision, yeah, let's change it completely. We know what we need to do, so let's just go and change it. And I literally remember it because it was a rainy day in Geneva, and then Richard called me, and he, this, these are the exact words. He said, Anton, all the stuff that I've been terrorizing you for the last couple of years, you know, with regards to how we need to save the planet, but first doing it by changing the financial system, we can do it, you know, it's no problem, we can do it. And the funny thing is, the technology already exists. And then kind of he said, you know, there's this thing called the blockchain. I said, oh, yeah, I heard about it somewhere. And then he I don't know, explained, you, you actually have to have colored coins when you need to put real assets, not cryptocurrencies. And then we can do all the magic that we wanted, you know. So this is actually, Lilik is just like the continuation of his vision. I, I say it continuation because it's not really a start. This was a long, long project. And I heard it, the idea, I heard the idea in different forms many, many times. It's just like kind of the, we never had a, a it was not obvious that the solution is out there, you just need to take it. So, so I know kind of Richard from a long time ago. So when I met him, uh, it was like seven or eight years ago, seven years ago. And literally the first day when I met him, he started, so I would be politically incorrect, he started brainwashing, you know. And, um, he, and he did it in a very nice way, so just to make it clear, you know, he's, he is like very kind and very nice, you know, and, and he makes you feel good about yourself, you know, you, like everyone at Lika, you know, he says, you know, you can succeed, you, may, you, you convince yourself that you can succeed. So kind of when I met him, he started uh, giving me, t telling me about his ideas, how we need to do it. And it was just a long process that actually I started believing it, because when you hear an abstract idea about changing the, you know, saving the planet, is just like, it's a, it's a very funny thing to hear. But when you hear it long enough, and if you hear it in a kind manner, then you, you believe it's possible. So this is really how it is. You know, I met Richard early on. He said, OK, uh, you can join me. And then we kind of moved together. And I'm now here helping him you know, save the planet.